In this video, we'll go over the many variations of the ideal gas law, which you should have ingrained in your memory as PV equals NRT. And when I was coming up with the idea for this video, I was trying to figure out a good way to organize it. We have Avogadro's law, Boyle's law, Charles, and Dalton, so I thought maybe an A, B, C, D. But rather than that, I think it's better to go through all of the components, P, V equals N, R, T. And we can explain some of the nuances of all of these by just going through them individually. So we'll start with pressure. And what we have here is that the total pressure of a gas is the sum of the partial pressures of all of the gases in that mixture. I use this paragraph symbol for partial pressure. I just think it simplifies the discussion. So essentially, you can find the total pressure of a gas mixture by looking at the partial pressures of each of the components. And then we get to what's called Dalton's Law, and that says that the partial pressure of any one gas in a mixture is equal to the total pressure times its mole fraction. So if 40% of the moles of that gas are of gas A and the rest are of other pieces of the gas mixture, then you'll see that the partial pressure of that gas A is going to be 40% of the total pressure. And this is a theme you see a lot with gases. It doesn't matter so much the identity of which gas particles are in there. They're all treated as somewhat equal. So what's more important is how many of those particles are made up of that one particular compound. So if we're looking for the partial pressure of A, we simply look at the total pressure of the gas mixture and multiply that by the mole fraction of A. Dalton's law also says if we're looking for the partial pressure of gas B, we'll take the total pressure of the gas mixture and multiply that by the mole fraction of B. And so Dalton's law is the law of partial pressures. When you add the partial pressures of all of the gases in a mixture, that equals your total pressure. And the pressure of each individual type of gas particle is going to be expressed by its mole fraction. So if there's a total pressure of, let's say, one atmosphere, and let's say the mole fraction of H2O in that gas is 0.6, then the partial pressure of that would be 0.6 atmospheres because the partial pressure of any gas within a mixture is always proportional to its mole fraction. Then we'll move on to volume. And the main thing to know about volume in gases is that if you're at standard temperature and pressure, meaning 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure of one atmosphere, or you could say 760 millimeters of mercury, or any of the, the standard pressures that you encounter, know that one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters. It doesn't matter what the gas is, what type of gas particles are in there. As long as you have one mole of gas particles, those will occupy 22.4 liters when you're at standard temperature and pressure. And this is a number to remember, and you might be responsible for just having this from memory. 22.4 liters is the amount of volume taken up by one mole of gas particles when you're at standard temperature and pressure here. Then we move from P to V into the equal sign. And I decided for the equal sign, we would go over all of the equalities and all of the various laws that have been developed that set some things equal to others. And the interesting thing is that all of these can be derived by simply looking at this formula, knowing which things you're keeping constant, and seeing how the other pieces would vary. But as people were developing the laws of physical chemistry, different rules got named after different chemists. And they're all relationships between two of these qualities here when everything else is kept constant. So we'll start with Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law says that if the pressure and temperature are constant, and remember that R isn't going to vary, R is R, then what we have left is the volume and N, V and N. And so what that says is that the relationship of the number of moles to the volume will be the same if you keep pressure, temperature, and R constant. So the number of moles in one environment over the volume that they occupy in that environment 
will be equal to the ratio of the number of moles in another environment divided by the volume that they occupy in that environment. So N1 over V1 equals N2 over V2 if you keep pressure and temperature constant and you allow for the fact that R is a constant so it will not be changing. Boyle's law says that if you're at a constant N, a constant number, and a constant temperature, then the product of pressure and volume in one situation will be equal to that product in the second. So P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. The interesting thing is that the pressure and volume will vary in an inversely proportional relationship. So if you keep N temperature and R constant and the pressure increases, that means that the volume must decrease because P times V will be the same here versus when you vary the situation and change either volume or pressure. So if all of these other things are constant, the number of moles, the temperature, and R, which is always constant, then if you see an increase in pressure, that means a decrease in volume. If you see an increase in volume, that means a decrease in pressure. And that is Boyle's law. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. And then we can also get Charles' law which says that the relationship is proportional between volume and temperature if you keep the number of moles and the pressure constant. And so what this generally means is that if you have the same number of moles and the pressure is the same, if there's an increase in temperature, that will be accompanied with an increase in volume. And so it's just one more version of this where you keep certain parts constant and the other two will vary directly with each other. So Avogadro's, Boyle's, and Charles, you can either remember these laws or you can simply remember this and be able to work out what would have to change if this relationship was going to be maintained and some of the items stayed constant. So that covers the equal sign. We go over Avogadro's, Boyle's, and Charles' law, and they're all just variations of PV equals NRT with certain things held constant. Then we get into N. And N is the number of moles of gas particles. And a lot of times that will just be given to you. And remember that the number of moles relates to volume because at STP, the number one mole occupies 22.4 liters. But sometimes they don't give you the number of moles explicitly. And so I just put a little formula here that can be useful for understanding how many moles you have. And that is that you can look at the mass of your gas sample in grams and divide that by the molecular weight in AMU, atomic mass units, and that will tell you how many moles of the gas you have. So let's just say that we're working with 24 grams of carbon and we remember that the molecular weight or atomic weight of carbon is 12. 24 divided by 12 equals two and so that means that you have two moles of carbon. And if you have two moles of carbon and it happens to be at standard temperature and pressure and all of that carbon is in the gas form, then you're going to have 44.8 liters. So just realize that if you're given mass and you know the atomic or molecular weight of a compound, then you can deduce how many moles of that you have. And this is useful for comparing it to other components of the ideal gas law. Then we move on to arguably the most complex or at least the most difficult to remember component of all these and that is R. R is the gas constant or the ideal gas constant and the unusual thing about R is that R takes a lot of different forms depending on what you're measuring and what units you're working with. If you're doing R based problems on the MCAT they will give you the value of R that you have to use and so you don't need to commit these to memory. If you're doing it for a chemistry class or something like that, your instructor may have different ideas of what you should memorize. But if you're going into the MCAT, you don't need to commit all of these to memory, which is a very, very good thing because you'll be remembering enough formulas as it is. One of the most common forms of R that you encounter is 8.314 joules per Kelvin times mole. And you can also see that expressed as 8.314 cubic meters times pascals per 
Kelvin times moles. So that's just one value of R that you can encounter. And notice that if you're using R and they give you the value in the units of R, that tells you a lot about the units you should be paying attention to for all of these components of the ideal gas law. So if they give you something that deals with cubic meters and pascals, then you know that cubic meters is going to be your volume unit rather than liters or something like that. And pascals is going to be your unit of pressure rather than atmospheres or something like that. So just be aware of how the units of R can help tip you off to what other units you should be using in your calculations. R can also be expressed as 0.08206 liters atmospheres per Kelvin times mole. And this is something that you encounter when you're dealing with osmotic pressure, where the osmotic pressure is equal to I MRT, where I is the Van't Hoff factor, M is the molarity, this number will be R, and T will be temperature in Kelvin. So you'll see this one a fair bit, 0.08206 liters atmospheres per K mole. Or you may also see this as simply 0.0821 liter atmosphere per K mole. And then probably the most obscure value of R that you can have is this one, 62.36 liters times tor per Kelvin times mole. And this one is something that hopefully will be given to you. It's not one that you should be expected to just know off the top of your head in most cases. But it's one more version of R that you can use in PV equals NRT. And it specifically deals with when you're given tor as the unit of pressure. So we've gone through P, which is all the variations of Dalton's law and how partial pressures relate to total pressure. We've gone over V, which is the volume that a mole of a gas will occupy at standard temperature and pressure of 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. The equal signs set up all our equivalences, Avogadro's law, Boyle's law, Charles' law, N is the number of moles. Remember, we can find that with mass divided by molecular weight as long as our mass is in grams and our molecular weight or atomic weight is in AMU. And then we went through the various versions of R, which can kind of clue you in to what units you should be using for the other pieces of PV equals NRT. Finally, we get to temperature. Temperature is fairly simple. The thing to remember about temperature is that Temperature, in this case, is measured in Kelvin and not degrees Celsius. So you may have to add 272 or 273 to it in order to find the Kelvin that you're using. But make sure you don't plug in degrees Celsius here, but instead focus on how many Kelvin the temperature is measured in. And if you can get all of these down, hopefully this PV equals NRT way can help organize all these rules and variations in your head. And then you'll be able to deal with so many questions that come up based on all of the properties of gases and based on a lot of different variants of the ideal gas equation that you might encounter.